This is Wild Rider, the most awesome of Stunticons. While his teammates get new toys and homages left and right, he never needed them. He was that cool. The guy took out Rodimus Prime by himself in one hit, then stole the Matrix. This guy did what Galvatron couldn't, and now he's back. Back to, oh, he has a cute elephant pet, aww. Behold the latest in a strangely long line of ARMS Micron exclusive Prime figures, this one being the Stunticon Wild Rider, or Stunt Wild Rider according to the box. Either way, he's the familiar grey roadster with red windows. If you also see things through rose tinted glasses, you'll be happy to see he is using Wheeljack's mold, one of the best in Prime, and his sharp line sports car is perfect for Wild Rider. It's based on a 2011 Lancia New Stratos concept car, with just enough new detailing to keep it away from a copyright lawsuit. Speaking of detail, you might notice only the gold on the rims and intakes are painted on, everything else is stickered. Welcome to Arms Micron, where deco is optional and do it yourself. For those unaware, the idea is kids in Japan like personalizing their toys, hence the stickering. There's even some extras that the instructions have no place for, and they're kinda cool, like this Stunticon logo, complete with the Bakkan 2011 Decepticon symbol. Most do have suggested spots, and they can get tricky, as often they just fit into their intended destinations, and some cross multiple parts, like the hood stickers. Get it right, and it looks awesome. Get it wrong, and it does not look awesome. I'm sorry, I didn't think that one out. I love the look though. The slanted Decepticon logo is unique and the G1 mesh detailing is represented well. Oh, and since this is the Wheeljack mold, his swords are here to connect to the bumper. It still looks ridiculous, but still cool. Not sure how it pulls that off, but it does. And oddly suiting for someone with an elephant sidekick. Drive-by ankle stabbing action. Oh, and they can store away underneath. That's far more useful, but not nearly as cool. I'll give you the side-by-side -side just to be complete about this. Obviously, the decos are going for completely different things. Both look awesome on the mold, though I admit I like Wild Rider's dark colors better. If only for Wheeljack's lack of green and the red on the sides that seems random. Yes, I know it's show accurate, it just doesn't look as good. Transformation on Wild Rider is pretty intuitive and clean, no real leftover kibble aside from the windshields. This was an issue for some since Wheeljack has a false windshield chest, it's considered a cheat. But it's a brand new character, so that's not an issue here. Of course he retains a really neat leg transformation that results in great use of the extra bulk. All in all, a fun and satisfying transformation. In robot mode, Wild Rider's looking wicked, menacing, and rather gorilla armed to be honest. I don't mind the look so much though, especially for a sword wielding character, and this can kind of be remedied if it offends your eyes, but we'll get to that. Let's talk the robot mode itself. We've traded in shiny decals for Wild Rider's signature dark red, complete with a metal flake look to it, and some black here and there. I said he was awesome, not colorful. What colors he retains is the vehicle mode details that still show, like the intakes and the headlights on the legs, and that new gold sticker that wraps around what used to be Wheeljack's fake windshield. They took advantage of this to give his chest a unique look and introduces some new color into it. That said, I think they missed a big chance to give him a closer G1 look, had the sticker been silver and extended to the front of the chest as well. You even had this part in the middle, like his old toy did. And I know they intended to make him look closer to his G1 appearance because of his head antenna. These are on his G1 character model, but none of the toys had them. 
Okay, he barely has any toys, but even the new head on the Bakon version lacked them because the mold had no space for them when transformed. This is why Wheeljack is a perfect choice for Wild Rider. He's already engineered for big ears. Yeah, they look a little silly, horns coming out of his ears and all, but it's the first time a major detail in his design got included, and those are worth extra points for me. Oh, and the head sculpt is nice, too. I like the gold eyes in particular. Articulation-wise, we're not doing too bad here. Ball jointed neck and shoulders with a little limitation in outward movement. Hinges above and below the biceps so the arms can move forward without moving the shoulder armor if you see fit. These are also the joints that let you rework the arms to be shorter if you'd like. There's a wrist ball joint and hinge as well, but he's missing a bicep swivel, and as you pose him, you can really tell he needed that to be outstanding. No waist joint, but you get ball jointed hips and swivels, 90 degree knees, and full ball jointed ankles. Aside from the mentioned bicep swivel, he has a great range of motion, which is appropriate for a sword wielder, and he's great at posing. Speaking of, the swords are unchanged from Wheeljack's, same blades with Cybertronian runes molded in. Sadly, they're unpainted though, they would have looked awesome with some gold paint. They still store away on the back too, really like how they work that in, or just to be different, they can peg into his shoulders as well. But then there's the most important accessory. Meet Ozu, Wild Rider's Arms Micron sidekick. Have to admit, it's hard to take a villain seriously when he has such a cute pet. If you've never had an Arms Micron, you build their minicons yourself, more of that customizing thing. But that also means the toy is unpainted aside from stickers, so they look a little simple. They usually manage to have some good character to them though, and Ozu's no different. Something about the stubby legs and fat nose on this guy make me like him a lot. Speaking of, he has some articulation in that trunk, but only enough for transformation, which is more involved than I thought, and results in a grenade launcher that looks like it delivers a brutal impact. Something about this mode is just off though. I think it's how far back the handle is. The shape there is just so odd, I feel like the grip should be closer. But since they release some of these separately, I guess the big guys have to be able to hold it too. I'd say the weapon suits Wild Rider well enough, it just looks a bit off. That doesn't detract from a really good figure though. It brings a totally different feel to one of Prime's best molds, and finally gives one of the more neglected Stunticons an update. Wild Rider was one of the few toys to survive my childhood, so I'm always happy to see him get a little bit of love, and in this case, it doesn't disappoint. Now it's just poor Dead End left without an update. He just gets his name used a lot, and it's not always pretty. <laughs> Don't do that to me. I'll stick to my less garish Wheeljack remolds. Thank you.